Hey y'all, it's your girl Claudia Jordan. We're here to spill the tea, break down some of the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So sit back, relax, and get ready to sip this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds. Hey Al, I know you're tired from this weekend. I, I know. What's going on, Claudia? I <laughs> am the same way. We are exhausted. We was out in <laughs> Image Awards streets, right? Hey, man, it was some good streets to be in, though. They did a really good job this year. Absolutely. And please welcome Armand Wiggins. What's up, Armand? How are you? What's going on, guys? I'm here. I'm alive. It was been it was a rough weekend for me too. A party down. Lost my phone. Oh my gosh. I had to get a new phone before Monday. So I'm here. Are you lose your phone? I went to Rolling Loud and somebody pickpocketed me at the Nicki Minaj concert. Wow. I was devastated. You don't have the Find My Phone app? Do you have that on your computer? They turned my they turned everything off. So I, was, I couldn't even wait. I was like, you know, I got to get a new phone because things you change so quick here. Do you have no password on your phone? No, I had a password. I had a password. for sure. Damn, how they do? They are just getting these criminals that they would just use their powers for good instead of evil. Right. All right. Um, well, I, I, well, I guess everyone's weekend. We kind of feel like we all been we're giving ran through right now. Y'all we're going to have to get energy. <laughs> everyone's giving ran through kind of tired. For real, for real. But yeah. Then I, met, was, then I met up with your boy Al last night. Oh, so we had a, that, that was a movie. Okay. Where were we <laughs> so, all at? Jeez, oh where were we not at? This boy, you thought I was bad. Whoa, he's got energy like a 12 year old. <laughs> First of all, yeah. Al is me when I'm older, but let's be clear. Al started out by himself. I was just on the freeway. I'm like, hey, what are you doing? He was like, oh, I'm at uh, Mama's shelter. I was like, I'm going to pull up on you. I had on sweatshirt, uh, sweats and like shorts. That turned into this spot, that spot, <laughs> and it was three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, what happened? Yeah. Well, we Sounds, about right. <laughs> Sounds about right. Sounds about right. I was on a red eye traveling back last night while y'all was out in these streets having them drinks. So, but we all feeling it today. We're gonna power through this today. Dare I ask if anyone's drinking? I'm drinking apple juice. I'm trying to get this this energy back. Y'all drinking? Nope. No, it's water. Yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, I landed, my flight landed at like 6 a.m. I went straight to the grocery store. I bought all kind of healthy food. You know, when you feel like you just did too Guilty. much, I bought yeah. kale and strawberries and stuff. I'm like, I had to cleanse my system after this weekend. All right, lo, let's get into the show since nobody's drinking. We're going to power through soulmates because we're here for you. All right, tonight we are kicking out the show by celebrating Women's History Month. All right, in honor of the 55th annual NAACP Image Awards, we're going to pay homage to Fantasia, who delivered a powerful speech after winning Best Actress in a Motion Picture for her portrayal of Celie in The Color Purple. Fantasia said, I was afraid to play Celie, but I'm glad I did because I kept saying, if I don't win an award, the awards that I will win will come from the people who watch Color Purple and the women who will relate to her and feel like Oscars when they walk out. What are your thoughts on Fantasia's big win? Al, let's go to you first. Man, Claudia, you know Fantasia has killed it on the carpet this award season. I've enjoyed watching her interview. I've enjoyed watching her accept awards. I've enjoyed her speeches. I've enjoyed her story. I've even enjoyed her fashions. And when you thought she couldn't look any more beautiful, she looked like that if the production could put the picture back up for the NAACP Awards. I, I, I just I just don't know how to say it. But to me, Fantasia is just walking in her truth and she is getting all her flowers again remember she went from being the youngest winner of american idol and being one of the most successful to now gracing us on the big screen as a, a legitimate actor now and i'm proud to say i've enjoyed watching every bit of it congratulations fantasia and i wish you all the best with your future and congratulations to taraji p henson who received an image award for outstanding supporting actress in a motion picture for her role as trick avery and the color purple last night was pretty popping. Armand, what'd you think about the people that showed up? Oprah, there was a lot of people who were in a tent. Carrie, yeah. Carrie Washington, a lot of people were on that red carpet last night. Yeah, in regards to Fantasia, like, I'll be honest, I really didn't like the color purple, but I will say Fantasia is stellar. I love everything about Fantasia. She could do no wrong. Amazing voice, amazing talent, and the way she handles conversations and interviews, she does it with so much poise and class. 
So I feel like she deserves everything that she's getting. And not to mention, Fantasia probably is the best dress in the game right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ain't nobody playing with Fantasia's fashion. Nobody. She so, has come a long way. I love she it. Is murder in the game. Real quick, Jordan Sparks is the youngest winner of American Idol, but Fantasia was pretty young when she won. So Yeah, well, she was the youngest at the time that she won. She was 19. That's what I meant. Sorry if I didn't get that out correctly. All good, all good. Uh, Rodney says, I'm happy Fantasia made a comeback. And Alicia, so pretty, says, when you have real talent like Fantasia, you can always get us back on your side. She's looking good. She is. I love a glow up. I love it. I love it. All right, time to get into some topics. Since we're on the subject of the NAACP Image Awards, Amanda Seals shared her perspective on not being recognized in Black spaces. Check this out. If it wasn't for y'all, I would really think that I ain't doing because the industry I'm in does not recognize me. And to be clear, I'm speaking about the black spaces in the industry I'm in, because y'all know I don't give two dams about any of these other spaces, but I'm, I, the black spaces is what I'm referring to, which is largely in part why I've realized like I need to shift out of this industry. You know, like I don't get invited to Essence Women in Hollywood. I've never been invited to the NAACP Image Awards. All right, let's get into this. What are your thoughts, Armand? What do you think about this? Here's the thing. So I was with her until a point because she did another video after that. And she kind of did a, like a clarification video and was basically saying that, you know, she wasn't trying to say that, you know, she wanted the acceptance from the big platform. She wanted the acceptance from the people. And that's why she was talking about it. But for me, I just think that, you know, if she would have just left this video right here, I would have been more with her because it would have felt like she was living more in her truth. When she did that rebuttal video, it made me feel like, girl, just be honest, you want to be recognized for the work that you've done and you don't feel like you're being recognized by your peers and you're not living and being honest about it, you know? And so for that, I just can't get with it because I feel like she's being fake about the situation. You want the attention, just leave it at that and move on. And, I, and I'm with you on that. But the fact that she tried to come back and make it seem as though it wasn't about being recognized by the major platforms, that's the problem that I have with it. Okay, Al, what do you think? You know, I, I disagree. I have to say, um, I really appreciate Amanda Seal's honesty. I think it's the messenger and not the message. She is not only an actor and a comedian, but she's an activist and she speaks into this space, especially the African-American community space and all marginalized groups. So for her not to be invited to the NAACP awards, I do see that as being a slap in the face because that's exactly what the NAACP does. And she's an incredible talent. She's been doing doing it for 20 years. She's been on everything from Deaf Comedy Jam to, to the big screen, to uh, hosting radio shows, to hosting television shows. The woman has done it all. And it's very, very difficult to build a brand around, um, especially in entertainment, building a brand about being an activist for the, the voiceless. And I, I just feel like if, if it, I think there's a disconnect between the messenger and the message because otherwise she should be at every single one of those events given what she's done and her activism for our community. I'm going to say this and I'm going to be careful with this because I still want to go back, but I've definitely heard a lot of black celebrities feel the same way about having a difficult time getting invited to our black award shows. Mm -hmm. um, or and if they do go, they're getting a trash ticket up in the balcony, kind of just cast aside, and they've worked in the industry for many, many years. Um, I do think Amanda should be invited to this. I do think she should be invited to the BET Awards during COVID, if you don't ever, if you don't recall, she hosted the award from her home, and then the very next year, she, she wasn't invited back. So I do think that that is a mistake. You know, I don't know if she rubbed somebody the wrong way or whatever, but this woman, there is no denying that Amanda Seals definitely is an advocate for black people. Right. Whether they don't like her delivery, and I think that may be part of it. People mm -hmm. may not like her delivery, but she is an advocate. Um, and yes, I do agree. She probably does want the um, recognition, but who wants to really say that, Armand? So that's probably why she's saying that. I, you know, But she said it. She said it in the video we just watched. And then yes. she went back and changed her mind. And like, but, but that doesn't take it. away. That doesn't take away from her original complaint, though. That could be a no. I could see that could irritate you, but I do think she has a valid point. If you do all this work in a black space, and then you see reality stars walking the red carpet, people that have one single walk in the red carpet, and you have dedicated years to black people's right. causes, you should be invited there. There's seat fillers. Absolutely. There. 
but Disney but my Plus. thing is but my thing is stand on that. I agree with both of you guys 100. percent But don't when the comment section starts getting hot saying, "Oh, girl, you just want the attention, you just want the recognition." Don't come and make a video saying, "Well, it's not about the recognition, guys. It's not about that." Yes, it is because you talked about you said that you were shifting out of the industry because they're not recognizing you and inviting you to the show. So my thing is this: while I agree with you guys, I'm just saying stand on business. Don't change your mind when the comment section gets hot. You know, that's so interesting, Armand, because you 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 interpret it completely different than I did. I interpret it as her saying, I, you're, you're not respecting me. I'm an entertainer that stands on racial equality. I stand on that every day, and I don't make any excuses for it. So she feels disrespected as an advocate of the community, not being invited to anything that uplifts the community. It's just an oxymoron at its finest, if you ask me. It, it is tough for these shows until you get your inside person trust and believe she is not lying okay <laughs> man i'm gonna hook you up my people at bt because i do have my direct connect now and i feel like she should be there especially after you oh and nominated for our image awards but not invited it's crazy to me yeah. you, you you gotta come on now all right nene leaks recently called out Portia williams after she reportedly told the production team of the netflix show the upshaws that she refused to work alongside her due to their issues in the past Take a look at Nini's response. I am shocked to hear that Portia would go to a production company and say that she doesn't want to work with me because we've had a lot of issues in the past. What lots of issues that we had in the past? Mind you guys, I haven't been a housewife in over four and a half years, okay? Besides that, as black women, okay, when you call a black woman angry, difficult, We've got problems. I can't work with them on set. That is a death trap for a black woman in the industry. All right. What are your thoughts on the situation? And also, Needy was recently spotted out hanging out with her man alongside with Portia's soon-to-be ex-husband, Simon, and his lady friend, Al. This is your friend, so let's go. To <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. You know, I, I feel like this. Nene has every right to speak out. She has every right to share her truth and to speak her story. She has a dark cloud over her, you know, with the exit of Bravo and all of that and, and them labeling her as difficult. And she's trying to stand up for herself and talking about racism. So she has been deemed, you know, maybe an angry or difficult to work with black woman. And the deal is you don't play with people's money. And definitely not when she's been doing so well and rebuilding her brand. For Portia to kind of lean in like that, I thought that was pretty low down, especially for black women in the industry. The one thing that I've always admired about this industry, at least from the outside looking in, is black women usually have each other's back when it comes to work. They might not like each other, but they do help each other and they do try to help navigate each other. So I guess, Claudia, you could probably speak on this more than me, but I don't believe that anything Nene said was wrong. I'm going to have to say this, and people can be mad if they want to. I remember many times of Nene being on Bravo on Watch What Happens Live and her saying that certain people should be fired from the show. Let's keep it a buck. She's definitely getting other people's, other people's way of a check. And I think, unfortunately, this is coming back to bite her. Now, I do not think what Portia's doing is right either. Don't stop smelling yourself now, Portia, because the network has asked you to come back because you know the people do want Nene back on that show. Uh, they want her back on Housewives. And I'm sure they would love to see you two link up. But let's I'm not going to sit here and pretend that both of these ladies have not said things about other women to block them from getting bags. That is very well documented. All you got to do is go back and watch Andy's watch what happens live. He asks everybody all the time, who do you think shouldn't come back? And a lot of times people were really saying who they should sit there. Uh, she's boring. Candy. Like there's been a lot of that from each other. So it's not a victim and a, in a, an aggressor here. I think there's a lot of it going on both sides. That's, I gotta be fair, you know, and I, I, I gotta be fair, but Portia, remember you was just, you just got back in the fold, like relax, relax, relax. And you know, I, because it, it's like, it, it's karma that keeps on happening, you know? You right. do it to her, it may get done to you. You don't know how this industry is going to circle the block because it always does. Our mom, what do you think? Listen, I hate that this is happening because, you know, these are my two favorites. Um, but if I'm being honest, um, after watching the full clips, you know, it seemed like, like I'm, I'm, I stand with Needy, first of all. Let's just be very clear on that. I stand with Needy because it's like, listen, I've been hanging out with you. We were texting. We were friends. Yeah. We've been hanging out together. Then all of a sudden, it's time to get on set, and you don't want to work with me. Honestly, I just have to call a thing a thing. 
I don't feel like Nene said, I don't feel like Portia wanted to share the spotlight. If we want to keep it 100, it doesn't matter who your fave is. Nene is the most polarizing housewife of all time. She is the biggest housewife of all time. She is the she's the she's the most famous to me. She's the biggest star out of all the housewives to me. And I just personally feel as though Portia knew that Nene being on that platform next to her probably was going to take away from her moment. And mm. she did not want to share that moment. And a lot of women, unfortunately, do that. A lot of black people do that because they feel like space is so limited in Hollywood. So we will not want to work with someone in fear that they'll take our spot. Right. Oh, it's definitely not a black woman thing. It's definitely a black people thing because there's a lot of <laughs> crabs in the bucket, pulling people down. No, don't yeah. do that. Can't do this. Can't do That's that. True. And we see that every single day. I will say this, Portia and Needy, to both of you, um, a ma you got to start getting into a team mentality. I'm telling you, it's amazing when you're like the star. It's fantastic. But a lot of times you start smelling yourself like that. You will fall by the wayside and that will be your demise. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so much better being part of a strong team because there's going to be times where someone's going to be weak on one thing. We kind of, the other person may fall short. And when you have a strong team, it is just a different type of effect Imagine if y'all would have called, and I didn't know they were still hanging out and talking and cool like that. If yeah. that's the case, of course, you mad shady for that. Like, what is the issue with that? So y'all should be, you know, like, be a team. Like, come, both of you coming back to the same show would have been huge. Although I have heard they reach out to a lot of housewives. Well, Nene said that Portia was upset because she sent her a text and she said, well, I'm going through my divorce and you didn't text baby sister. And I'm like, girl. That's why you didn't want to work with me because I didn't text you in regards well, they to your all, divorce. They all do that because there was a whole thing with Nene with Flat. They all do that, you guys. I'm, I have to be honest, y'all. I don't have okay. a favorite. <laughs> I don't have a favorite, so you know, I, and it can be. You yeah. like Candy. Candy is your favorite. No, no she no, likes um, Kenya. No, Kenya. no, C Cynthia and Kenya are the ones I was the closest to. Oh, okay. So I, I'm just being fair about these two. I'm saying there's been a lot of, well, you didn't send me flowers when this one passed. Well, you didn't do this when you, there's been a lot of, if, if you, if we're being a buck, you guys, and I'll do it because I don't have a favorite. I don't have a dog in this race. Not to call them dogs. It's just a saying. I'm just saying everyone has done this to each other. Keep it a buck. All right. We have some comments. Uh, Ryan says, is Nene trying to work her way back on the show? And Lauren said, Nene has also said these women are, are hard to work with and violence. And Maya said, but didn't she stop Nene's bag? Nene still got the part. Oh, but she didn't stop Nene's bag. Nene still got the part. Okay, and Derek said, maybe Bravo told the cast they can't work with Nene. That could be a possibility, too. Yeah, yeah. You may not want to upset your network. And, you know, again, lots of nefarious things happen behind the scenes that we are not privy to. So we don't know. We're just going by the surface stuff that we see. But y'all need to call each other and, and, and work that out because y'all really did have a relationship. All right, keep it locked because coming up next, Candace Owens is calling out Lizzo and later find out what we would do in sticky situations. We'll be right back. Take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine, because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. I hug you. Yeah. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I'd probably do. I love you, I love you too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe.
Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, join a recent interview with Joe Button, Candace Owens, further discuss her issues with Lizzo. Candace referred to the time she called Lizzo's behavior problematic when the singer was twerking at an NBA game in a thong back in 2019. Now, she also mentioned how she felt gaslit after Lizzo replied to her concerns and said, it's a problem uh, if you took behavior, if you took issue with her behavior. Like, it's your problem. It's a you problem if you took issue with her behavior. What are your thoughts? And does Candace have a point? Armand, let's go to you on this one first. What do you think? I totally agree with uh, Candace Owens. I've been talking about this for a while when it comes to Lizzo. Um, at the end of the day, let's just call a thing a thing. Lizzo is a heavy set, overweight woman. You've got your butt out at a game like that. That's blasphemous. We don't want to see that. Everybody doesn't need to see that. That's not flattering. Not only did she do that, she also was getting uh, water, a water hose sprayed all on her in a bikini. Like everybody doesn't need to see your weight flopping around, especially when you don't even want to be that size. So I, my, the problem that I have with mm -hmm. Lizzo is she'll act as if she's so happy and is body positive that she'll go out and do these crazy things and then be on the internet crying when people have an opinion or crying to the fact that, you know, people won't let her change and lose weight. My thing is, girl, listen, you do a lot of this stuff for attention. You got to remember, Lizzo was trying to find a hit for a while and she could not find a hit for a while. So she was doing a lot of stuff on the internet to trend. And I think that she was gaslighting the public because she was trying to make people feel bad for her because she was overweight. Listen, let's just be clear. We don't want to see all of that flying around everywhere. That's not flattering. It's not cute. And so she, I'm, I stand with Candace on 1000%. It's disgusting. All right, Al. You know what's so wild, Claudia? I, and I know you, you have expressed this sentiment as well. I have found myself actually agreeing with Candace Owens more and more lately as she asserts, assessed certain observations. And what's so interesting is, I don't know if the soulmates remember, but y'all remember months ago on this show, I said that I felt like there was a rebranding in her image that was occurring and that we were going to see a softer, nicer side that we could relate to. And guess what? It's happening. And now I'm like, geez, the one girl that I used to despise and think was just like one of those one of those renegade um, voices in, in entertainment is now becoming a voice of reason. I'm just confused. But she does make a lot of sense about a lot of things. You know, Kenneth Owens' problem was never that she wasn't intelligent. She did. She's always said smart things. She's always been brilliant. She's always been intelligent. But she also, two things can be true at the same time. While she is intelligent, she does make a lot of fair observations that are true. She also tap danced for the white man. She's also an agent of, of them. And she's a black person that makes a lot of money by criticizing publicly black people. And sometimes we like for her to keep that stuff in the house. Right. I do agree with her on this topic. I do think that uh, I love, I wish Lizzo would go back to making her music, playing her flute and showing how talented she is. What other sisters do you see out there playing the flute like that? That has talent like that, that has a face like that. But yet for a couple of years, and this is old news, I will say this, for a couple of years, all we saw was her butt. And I was myself getting sick of it as right. well. I feel like a lot of times people feign body positivity because they don't want to change their situation. And that's on them. I, I, I don't want to tell them to change if that's why you feel comfortable. But then you don't feel comfortable, then you like it, then you don't like it. My thing is this, it's about Candace Owen right now. Candace, you are smart. If you would just stay in this lane and be like fair, but also have the same smoke for white people once in a while, we'd probably be more supportive of you. But it seems like you make all your dollars trying to make sense out of our behavior, inclining black people. And I'd really never hear you have any smoke for anybody white. So are all white people perfect to you and black people are the only ones that can be criticized? That's what my issue is with her. Other than that, she does make sense a lot. And I sometimes hate that I agree, but I gotta, I gotta give credit where credit is due, even if I don't really rock with you. I really do. So... Oh, Candace Owens. Damn it. That was not in my bingo card for 2024. <laughs> She's right. I agree. Get that out of here. That's disgusting. Mortifying. Yeah. All right. Well, public uh, popular streamer Kai Snot found himself in hot water with Kanye West after the rapper calls him out for making fun of his clothes. Apparently, Kanye sent Kai a package of his new collection, and Kai jokingly stated that the pants were too big. Kanye slid in his DMs and wrote, 
don't make no jokes about my clothes. And then proceeded to say that he was controlled because he was had something not positive to say about his clothes. Do you think Kanye is being a little too harsh? Um, Al, what do you think? Oh, this is typical. This is how he gets, you know, uh, marketing and PR around his clothes. Pick the one of the most famous or biggest huge streamer to, to fight with, and all of a sudden it becomes a story, and we're covering it here on TGIF. Can you imagine receiving a whole box of clothes and they all are too big? Come on, Kanye. That's not his fault. He's just telling the truth. That's like, you know, getting a, a Christmas present and it's a it's a female item and you're a man. It's just not working. So he has a right to assess it and say the clothes were too big. And it's not anything that he should have necessarily ran to the media and tried to drag him for. Now, Kanye's manager, John Monopoly, seemingly threatened Kai after their conversation and wrote, the following message to the shade room. We good. But if we ever need to link up for face to face, I'll meet him in his hood on 241st and Carpenter. Just me plus one. He could bring his whole team. This is so corny. Um, Armand, what do you think? Listen, I, I don't like, listen, you know, y'all know I love Kanye, but I just have a problem that all these older guys keep trying to make Kai Sinat a target. The guy is young. He's infiltrated the system. He's figured it out. He's making money. He's influential. And I think a lot of these older guys are hating on the dude. Obviously, the clothes are too big. His audience is full of streamers. He went up there. He talked about the clothes being big. He wasn't trashing Kanye. So, Kanye, you're a little bit out of line for this. And I feel like a lot of these older head rappers need to lay off of Kai Sanat. But at the end of the day, what I'm realizing is Kai Sanat is the clout. So they need that interaction with him in a negative way just so that they can be trending and we're talking about him on mm. TGIF. Mm. Kanye, you are way too seasoned to send a DM from your real account to this person who has a huge following. And in that kind of tone, I just think it was nuts. The clothes were too big. I saw the video. They look ridiculous. What size do you think this man was? How about saying, my bad, bro, new package going out. You know, they could have, I, I just suppose people would just handle conflict resolution a different way. Like maybe make a joke about it instead of it always going to the streets. Then his manager, how old is he? He's probably our age, Al. Talk about let's oh, meet yeah, up on yeah. 241st and Carpenter. So you let's can see. pull a muscle in your back and <laughs> throw your MCL out. Let's Knock be clear. Off, Nobody's uh, about to meet up. This is all for social media. Like if, if we ham handle it amicably, like then we're not going viral. They needed this to go viral. They wanted a moment with Kai right. Sanat, and they got their Kai Sanat moment, period. This is, this is embarrassing. And I'm speaking for the, the the people born in the 1900s. This is very embarrassing, very corny, Kanye. This is not a good look for you, because now you're beefing, you're beefing with this guy now, and you're giving him more. Uh, Brandon says, every week it's either Kanye, Monique, or Chris Brown complaining. Naisha Ka said, Kai got the clout, and everyone wants in on it. And Jacob said, Kanye, the only clothes you need to be worried about uh, is the ones we want your wife to put on. <laughs> That's a good one. She oh, don't we have need a, to wear clothes to me. I don't think she needs to. Uh, I think she needs to put that vagina away. It does <laughs> not she looks great. <laughs> Listen, at, at her age, when she was 27, 28, you don't have that body forever. You know what I'm saying? Flaunt it. Why not? Oh, I feel like anybody that has a problem. That's sexual lady. assault. Er, disgusting. <laughs> <Knock it off. laughs> You're a married Darn woman. Man. If a black woman was out there with her vagina out, y'all would be dragging her right. that she's a whore and, this, and let this white queen be out there with her vagina out. She should show it because she's 27. She's a married woman. Where is the judgment for that? He's okay with it. He's oh dressing her. I'd be like, y'all are hating. We are hating. It's gross. He's yeah. hating on his own other wife. She couldn't wear sexy dresses, but this one can have her coochie out. So you're it's telling me, so if you were married to a billionaire and you were 25 years old and he was like, babe, where would you want? You got a banging body. You wouldn't be showing it? I'm, I, there's never a reason for me to show my vagina in public. I don't care who I'm married to. <laughs> Why is that a good vagina. thing to you? Would she you want? Would vagina. you want? Uh, Amon, would you want your kids around a a stepmother dressed like that, breast out, nipples fairly barely covered, vagina out, looking sleazy? Like what kind of message? Well, let's be clear you? here. I don't think that they're going to the family Chuck E. Cheese like that. But when they're out on the town and they're doing their industry stuff, that's how she pops out. It's 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 her and her man. Why are we hating? When y'all go out, you get dressed up, you put on your, you know, your, you show a little skin, that's the way that she does it. Now, if she's with her kids, with the kids, then maybe you dress a little bit differently. But I feel like 
People is hating on this girl because she got the body that can do it. No, 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 that's not why we're hating her. It's a difference between showing a little skin. This is a little skin, you guys. A nice, beautiful, cleavage. That's, that's conservative. What? This is, no, this is showing skin. She's showing her labia major and labia minor. You can see her clitoris right. in public. What are you talking? You you know what? Don't speak about heterosexual <laughs> business. If you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, <laughs> oh, keep it, oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. Keep it locked because coming up next, Find out what we would do in sticky situations that don't involve having a vagina out on the streets. We'll be right back. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome our special guest co-host, T.S. Madison. Hey, y'all. Hey, soulmates. Y'all still my friend? T.G.I.F. <laughs> you make me giggle like a schoolgirl. Live and interactive. Y'all been flirting all week and it has not gone unnoticed by the soulmate. So might there be a little carryover after this a little situation? On Fox Soul. I will go visit Al wherever he is. He can take me out to dinner and he can pay for my babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> this one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. All right, welcome back to TGIF. Soulmates, have y'all ever thought about how you'd handle yourselves if you were placed in the middle of an unexpected situation? Well, we like for you to chime in in the fun segment. We like to call hashtag WWYD. What would you do? Okay, peep this. A Colorado man is facing a laundry list of charges after he was caught ejaculating on food while working at a grocery store. <sighs> Ugh. According to reports, Stephen Mosulta was allegedly seen masturbating beside uh, outside several businesses in full view of the employees. What would y'all do if you caught someone ejaculating on store items? And what are your thoughts on the story, Armand? That's disgusting, first of all. I probably would put my phone out and record it, though, and show somebody. <laughs> Honestly, I probably would put my phone out and record it because that is disgusting. And I would say, like, what are you doing? And I would probably go tell somebody because I'm like, I'm shopping here. And, I, you know, what else is happening around the store? That's just disgusting. And I hate perverts like that. That's weird. Uh, Al, what would you do if you saw this? <clears throat> well, actually, what I would do is I would pull out my phone and call the police. This is a form of sexual assault. And in certain states, that's how you can actually be charged because um, it's illegal for workers in fast food or grocery stores to, um, you know, ejaculate on food that is going to the public. And, you know, it used to be that you were charged, I think it was like a fifth degree, fifth degree uh, criminal sexual assault. Um, now they're making it laws in certain states that if this happens, you can be charged for sexual assault sent to prison. So I would call the police and then I would sue Safeway. Mm, I love that. Sue. And also, I believe it's a felony, right? Food tampering is a felony, too. Mm -hmm. uh, disgusting. What would I do? I'd record, of course, and be messy, send it to my friends. I'd also send it to the police. <laughs> I would. I'd be like, girl, look at this. This is nasty. Look at that thing. Okay, I'm going to keep it real. But I would definitely call the police. And I would probably try to... 
I would, yeah, I'll be like, yeah, get that one potato <laughs> off the tomatoes. Um, yeah, uh, we we definitely gonna have to make a scene and embarrass him because that's disgusting. And it makes me worry worry about getting food now. Yeah, you know I mean? like it's already already worry about is it washing up from hands. Now I gotta worry about peni and and yeah. his um on. on can you imagine? You sure? I'm positive that th th this is not his first time. This is just his first time getting caught, right? I mean, he was there yeah. from December 2023 to February 2024, a couple of months. I think it's probably a fetish of his. So this is gross. Jasmine says so. He's over there, Bill Clintoning the meats, and Brandy <laughs> said that's not the kind of smoothie I want. Okay. And you know, I just think it's so weird because it's like, I hate that men are always doing like weird stuff like this. Like you never really hear women kind of doing stuff like this. So I'm trying to figure out what is it about a man that they feel like I want to go and pull my thing out and jack it off, jack off in the grocery store. Like what, what is that? You're disgusting animals. That's why. <laughs> like it's not enough. Something about the vegetable section turns me on. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Man. You'll never see a girl masturbating and <laughs> yeah, touching so bananas. Stupid. Like we're not doing that's that. So dumb. Y'all got to get your. And you don't really see together. black people doing it either. Oh, right. Get your wow. demographic together, y'all. Here <laughs> having sex with horses and having <laughs> jizzing on melons and all kind of stuff. Okay, fellas, pack your belongings because Columbus, Georgia, is looking to pay a lucky person. $7,000 to relocate to the Southern city. Now, a few of the qualifications include being employed full time and able to relocate while retaining the current position and earning at least $75,000 annually from a single income source. The incentive is in support of bringing awareness to the city of Columbus. What would you do if you were offered $7,000 to relocate to Columbus and what are your thoughts on the initiative, Al? You look confused. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I would go to the state of West Virginia because they're giving twenty thousand dollars to locate to the Mountain State. I think I would go to West Virginia and get more money than go to Columbus, Georgia. I, I, I just don't see anything down there that would attract me to it. Okay, Armand, you taking the seven racks or no? Nah? Uh, no, I, honestly, I think it's a great idea for anybody that would probably want to go down there. But for me, I, you know, I'm never moving back to the South again. Texas, Georgia, they laws are too strict for me. And child, I can't do it. I done went to jail in Georgia too. <laughs> just for not having no insurance and having a dri no driver's license. Heaven like, forbid you follow the laws. <laughs> oh my, no, but I'm just saying, you know, I was down bad at that time, okay? I couldn't afford car insurance at one point. So then uh, you get pulled over, you don't get a fix it ticket, you go immediately behind bars. I can't stand, that's too much down there in the South. They like to hang people out there. I'm done with it. So I would, Seven. I would, Seven thousand dollars to relocate. That's about how much it costs for a moving truck, probably, and to, to move Very your things. Much. And then you have to maintain a job that you had before you got there. That seventy, that paid you seventy-five thousand. Uh, it's not really making sense. And I think you need right. to add in a zero to that. Miranda said that's where Kim Porter is from. I might move down there to hear what her family is saying about Diddy. Okay. <laughs> All right. An older woman was caught on camera stealing packages from a home. And what makes matters even worse? It seems like she's on parole based on the ankle bracelet that she is rocking. What would you do if you caught an elderly person stealing your package? Um, Armand. I would have opened that door so fast, let the dogs out, and I would have clicked out on that old home. Mm -hmm. I would have went off on her. <laughs> but you know what? I would've, and I would have grabbed my packages back and I probably would have laughed about it later as I'm recording. But it would have been fun though. It would have been fun. I would have read her though, for sure. Al? It's just so, this is just so sad on so many levels. Like she has an ankle bracelet on, she's old. She can barely get up the steps, barely carry the box back down the steps. <laughs> I mean, that's, I don't know. I guess I would turn her into the police. Try that around my address and see what happens to you. I have cameras, I have, uh, we. you can talk through the cameras and speak. I will scare the hell out of her and hope something happened. Because first of all, you don't know what's in that package you're stealing. That's could be true. medication, could be something that was very rare. And, you know, to, to, everyone has ring cameras now. Like, lady, what are you doing? Hopefully she's something's uh, wrong upstairs and you can blame it on that. But that is just rude. And she's already a menace. She's a menace. <laughs> she got an ankle brace on. She's a menace old lady. And just because you're elderly does not mean you're a sweet old nice lady. Um, they're still old menaces as well. Um, Stephanie says she would have a nasty fall down the stairs. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I wonder if I could get something where I could spray water or something. Like if I see someone doing something, like they could spray. Like, okay. Anyways, I'll worry about that later. Keep it locked. because use water. Remember, that's assault. Water? But uh, they're on, remember, the they're on your property, guy. though. 
You know, remember the guy that sprayed the homeless person in San oh, Francisco? Gonna, yeah, but I want that um, sidewalk though. You know what? I'm gonna look into these texts yeah, as well. So they they're a little meaner here, so I might be able to get away mm -hmm. with it. It might work <laughs> to my benefit. <laughs> All right, keep it locked because coming up next, we are playing a fashionable game of hit or miss, and later McDonald's may be forced to fix their broken ice cream machines after all these years. We'll be right back. Scene one of three, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. Can I hug you? Yes. If it made you feel that way, bro, I would probably do. Oh, man. I love you, too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back to TGIF. Shout out to all the soulmates in the chat. We see y'all. Run those numbers up. Okay, the federal government has heard our complaints and they're stepping in and urging McDonald's to fix their ice cream machines that are known to be raggedy, allegedly. Back in 2022, the company was sued by an ice cream repair company for $900 million after they prohibited the company from using a device to help prepare the broken machines. Mm. Now, the Federal Trade Commission and Department of Justice now want to make it legal for the company to use a third party to fix the machines. Are y'all here for this? And have you ever had an incident when you went to McDonald's, you want the ice cream, they're like, oh, it's broken today. Al, what do you think? Yeah, and it really upsets me because I really like, I really like it, you know, the ice cream a lot. Um, I think this is a great opportunity for for uh, anyone that wants to be a third, be considered as a third party. This is a this is a good little business opportunity because there are McDonald's everywhere. So you would stay busy and employed for a long time because they're always they're always broken down. OK, Armand, ever had this experience or what do you so, think? First of all, yes, many times. But I should even be eating ice cream because I'm lactose. But that was the ice cream that I would go and say, you know what? I would yeah. sit with myself and I would say, this is the day where we're going to sit inside, you know, and I'd go get my ice cream. But, you know, for years now. Um, I haven't had the ice cream, so I'm actually forgotten about it at this point. So honestly, it's I was really broken really all the time. Yeah, so I'm over <laughs> it. You know, it's just another example to me of corporate greed. These CEOs, instead of making 50 million a year, they're like, oh, I want 100 million. So you know what? We won't spend the money to fix what needs to be fixed. And I just feel like they just let the little guy just suffer. And they don't care. It's not a priority. The fact that a corporation, McDonald's is what? One of the top 10, well, one of the top successful com com companies in the world. They're everywhere. And you're notorious for having broken equipment. It should be a drop in the bucket for you to fix this. Like, get it together, McDonald's. All right. Nowadays, it seems like Diddy cannot catch a break. So sad. It's been reported that his charter school in Harlem, uh, Capital Prep, is under fire after an increase in violence, high teacher turnover rates, bed bug outbreaks, and an overall toxic work environment. Are you surprised, Al? Yikes. Yikes and double yikes. This is... 
I think I got poor Diddy when it rains, it pours. Um, it's the same thing that we're hearing about Kanye West school. You know, it's we live in a celebrity driven culture and these parents are sacrificing their children's education to have them in uh, proximities or adjacent to celebrities. And it's just not right. It doesn't make sense. It's not their lane. Why would you put your child in a school, especially, you know, bed bugs, Claudia? Teachers quitting. That sounds like a, a that sounds like a halfway house or something. I mean, that doesn't sound like a school that I would want to take my kid my kid to every day. And I think we probably should focus away giving these celebrities all of this um, attention. You know, when they do stuff like this, because that's just not what they do. We should let people who do this do it, and not just celebrities because they're celebrities. There's something to be saying said about staying in your lane, like things that you're actually known and be good at. Like you know, it always like baffled me when I would see someone who was an amazing athlete, you know, football player, basketball player. That what would they want to do? Open a record label, right? right. Like mm. just getting to something that is totally not on brand, and it's like, why don't you stay in the field? Like maybe speed training, that kind of stuff. That kind of you already have built in um, publicity of built in marketing. It just never made sense. to kind of do something outside of your brand. Cause you, we are to should assume that that is not where your strong suit is. That's not what made you right. famous and rich. I don't think education. When I think Diddy, I think abuse allegations and jumping in there. <laughs> yeah. You're like abuse allegations, but you know, the sad part, Claudia is just outside of that. The school's um, students ha are reading below their grade level. Mm -hmm. If you know that that school constantly has a record of the students not reading according to their grade level, why are you sending your kids to that school? It just doesn't add up to me. Yeah, I'm only yeah. thinking about this. Story. I, you know, it's just I think I think it's, I agree with both of you guys. It's ridiculous. I think that people are too celebrity driven. And like I was reading, they were trying to, you know, send their kids to that school in hopes that their kids will get discovered by Diddy and right. all this other crazy stuff. And then, too, unfortunately, this is also feels like one of those situations where it's like this is why you can't support black business because they get the infrastructure. They get it all set up. They put the nice celebrity face on there and then the school just goes to hell. You know what I'm saying? Bed bugs, fighting, no security. They're sitting in they're sitting in the lunchroom for hours, you know, but we got Diddy attached to it. We got people enrolled. It's just like you're not really getting any education. You're not getting anything out of it. So to support that kind of movement is just pointless. So it's unfortunate that it always happens to black people as well. We just a lot of times I just feel like these people just want recognition and the fame. They really don't want to put in the work, you know, even for even the business owners. We got to support our small black businesses now. I, yeah, like, I rocked with you on everything. Brother, yeah, me, hold on, but we got to be clear on support. Right there, let, me yeah. go, let me clean oh, that ahead, up. Claudia. I was going to say, Claudia. that's because of, how about this, to be fair, because of stuff like this, that's why when you are a black person with a lot of influence and money, it, you have a even deeper obligation to do well because unlike white people, we will be judged by the our worst. That mm. We don't get past it. So when you are in that position, Diddy, you have to, Kanye, no, when you mess up and you drop the ball on a school and have bed bugs and all these kind of issues, it does reflect badly on black, good black business out there that are actually trying to do things the right, right. way. They kind of all get painted with the same brush. And that's where you're messing up and you're dropping the ball and letting down your community. All right, we have some comments. Tina said, I'm just going to go go ahead and homeschool my kid. And Frito says, are the teachers getting paid unlike his former artists? Oh, damn. <laughs> mm. Wow. <laughs> I mean, he told us in a song, take that, take that. He was talking about, I'm taking your money, I'm taking your everything. Okay. But I think he was just the face, though, of this school. And he's kind of stepped down since the allegations. So it's the other guy, the actual owner, still running it. So maybe it's not Diddy's fault. Maybe he was just the face. Get them bug bed bugs together. That's disgusting. All right. Drake is known for making it rain at his concert. And his most recent generous offer was uh, devoted to a pregnant fan who held a poster that said, I'm five months pregnant. Can you be my rich baby daddy during his performance? Let's take a look at Drake's response. She got a sign that says, I'm five months pregnant. Can you be my rich baby daddy? Well, first of all, I don't want to offend your real baby daddy. But I would love to, first of all, get you out of the pit so we can put you somewhere safe like the VIP or some shit. Because you can't be perfect with that style. When I start playing some of these slappers, we can't have you getting pushed around. Second of all, I'd love to give you $25,000 so you can be... Wow.
I love this. Listen, we are here to spill tea and criticize, and we are here to also give props. Drake, this is awesome. I love this. Get her out of the pit because she's pregnant and more. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Um, my, I tip my hat to you. Um, uh, Al, what do you think? You know, this is, I mean, he's consistent. He's always generous to his fans. He speaks to him and he, it, it speaks to just who he is and it speaks to why he's so successful. I wanted to ask Armand this because I couldn't figure it out. Armand, what are his fans called? I don't know. The Owls? I don't know. Do they have, does he have a name? You know, Nicki Minaj, everybody has fans, mm -hmm. names for fans. I, I think they're like Owls, OVO, something. Like but you that. know what? Nicki Minaj is the exact same way, and they both are signed to Cash Money labels. So, you know, this is just, I mean, you could say a lot that he's weird in other, other ways, but in this, he's consistent and smart, and I, I like seeing it, and it makes me feel good, and I want to support him. I like it. I'm on what he's yeah. I love this. You know, I, I thought this was great. I thought this was phenomenal. However, you know me, me being me, I'm I'm wondering now. Well, did she ever actually get the money? You know what I mean? Because it's like uh, we do uh, these things. Like I'm gonna give you twenty five thousand dollars, but I want to see the post of her with the money. Like you know, how do you get her from here? And then when does she get the money? Like, does it take like sixty days? Do you write her a check right then and there? You know, because there's all those little things that happen after the fact of where it's like, okay, well, where's the money? You know what I mean? So I just would Soulmates. like to see, you know, what she does, you know, if she ever received the money. Soulmates, let us know if you have any tea, if she actually got the bread or not. And if she didn't, that will be our story for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I want okay. to see that post. Okay. Of the money. What if she's not pregnant? What if she's just chunky? I could probably play that off and say I'm about <laughs> Or what if she was hired for that, for that publicity moment? You just never know. But I'm just saying, uh, I would like to see her with the money. True, true. In production, y'all wrong for that picture of Drake. Put that picture back up. <laughs> 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 All right. Keep it live. He gets coming up next. We are playing a fun game of hit or miss. We'll be right back. Scene one of three, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to. Get the vaccine, because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. Can I hug you? Yes. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I'd probably do. I love you. I love you, too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back to TGIF. All right. In honor of the 55th annual NAACP Image Awards, we're going to play a fastball game of hit or miss. All right, let's cue the music and let this game start, get started. First up, we have Taraji P. Henson, hit or miss. I mean, for that, picture, for that picture, it looks like it could possibly be a miss, but in person, it was absolutely beautiful. The color was astonishing. It looked great on the gold carpet, and for her to win, made it super better. 
All right, I'm on. That's everything. This is one of the better pictures of her. Like her face looks great, the necklace, the structure of the dress. I'm going hit and I love the color. I say hit, she looked amazing. And yeah. I agree, Al, in person, even better. Next we have Damson Is Idris, uh, hit or miss. Hit, 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 hit. Oh, why is hit, it a hit? hit. He can hit, 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 hit. <laughs> oh, I know somebody likes him. All oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Uh, I thought it was basic. Um, I didn't mm. think that it was very fitted. It's going to be a miss for me. But just in general, this young man just has a grace and a presence. That is a hit. You got to talk to him while you look at the outfit. Then it really makes sense. Okay. He got the accent. <laughs> that makes it look, it makes it Yeah, fit. it adds to it. <laughs> I do love a British accent, though. I will say that. A British and a Jamaican accent, that will definitely get me. Uh, he looks good. There's nothing spectacular, but it's like, it's nice. But look at that Mar skin. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I'm talking about his outfit. This is outfit, Armand. <laughs> Armand is in heat. Is this spring? Right, he is. On oh, a regular. <laughs> <laughs> How about Eva Marcel, hit or miss? I had an opportunity for her to stop and talk to me at the carpet at the NAACP Image Awards, and it was absolutely beautiful. The colors, the sparkle, the skirt, the top, the waist style, and her weight. She's just so thin. She looked very beautiful, and her makeup was flawless. This is a hit for me. Okay, our mom, what do you think? Listen, a lot of people are talking about Eva's weight right now because she's extra thin, but I'm going to tell you something. This woman knows how to sell any yes. garment. Okay, and so it's going, it's a hit for me because she sells it and commits to everything. And that walk is fierce, baby. So I love it. It's a hit for me. And that face is everything. Her face is flawless. Her face always looks good. I love the skirt. And um, I like the, I, I can't pull it up because my waist is not little like that. I'd have to have a lot more fabric. So go ahead, Eva. <laughs> yeah, Pratt, Pratt, hit or miss? Absolute miss. Well, I got I gotta defend her. That picture is doing her no justice. That gown was actually intricate and it was very beautiful. And she looked like a little porcelain doll on top of like, you know, like a little ballet lady. That looks childish. Too ch childish as hell. That's a miss. All right, next we have Kiki Palmer, hit or miss. I thought she killed it. It was a total hit for me. Everything about her just looked like a million dollars on the carpet. Her makeup was flawless. The black, white cream came together with the red flower pop. The bow tie was everything and her lips and eyes just brought it all together. She looked amazing. Okay, Armand? I like the face. I don't like the tuxedo. I don't like it. It's a miss. But she looks beautiful, but out of the outfit, I don't like it. I corny. don't like it. It's corny. I usually don't like these masculine looks on women, but she, but going by what she's talked about lately as far as her sexuality and all that, I think she was doing a theme and I think it worked for her. And I will say I got to speak to her and she does watch the show and we had some kind words. So I think it worked for what she was doing her theme. All right, what about Jonathan Majors and Megan Good, hit or miss? Oh, this is awful. This is a miss, <laughs> completely. The whole thing is a miss from the hair to, oh, Megan looks, she, this is awful. I don't like it. I, yeah. I just I just want to say that it, it it just didn't come together. I, I I don't know. It just didn't come together. Her outfit, I couldn't figure it out. His outfit, I never am able to figure out. They are a beautiful couple. They're very attractive. But something about this outfit just did not hit for me today. Oh, Megan always usually nails it on the red carpet. I, I get she was out with the man, so she was giving a sexy look. I didn't like this dress on her. I've seen it looking so much better. And him, he just looks haggard. Yeah. He always gives me like he's coming up the set of a period piece, like from the 1800s. <laughs> you know, when it was a lot more struggle and strife. That's what I'm giving. <laughs> giving, I just got away. And it, this was hard for me to get here tonight. And they're, <laughs> they're an attractive couple, so they can do... I'm looking forward for redem Anything, I'm looking forward right? redemption on the next red carpet. Yeah. All right, next we have Fantasia. All right, we already know. Hit, 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 hit. Oh, yeah, hit, hit. Total hit. With everything. What is going on with her face? Or oh, this new makeup artist got her looking super young and happy. I like it. Definitely a hit. And that body is just voluptuous and banging in the right areas. And the, the gloves, the bow on the back. It's everything. Hit, hit, hit. All right. She looks fantastic. Oh, y'all threw me in here. What about me? Oh, I don't like asking this. Hit or me. Oh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I like it. It's a hit. Thank you. Thank that you. That walk, come on, walk. I like the color. 
You know, we, you know, Claudia stopped at us at Fox Song. We had her to do a couple of twirls. Hopefully, you, when we show the package this week, you'll get to see how actually beautiful <laughs> it was. She really electrified the carpet to the tune that when she got halfway down the carpet, they pulled her aside and made her do a couple of interviews for BET. That lets you know just how electrifying she was on the carpet thank that day. You, thank you, fellas. And I you did a that. great job selling it. You know, it, look, it looks good. I really love thank the areas in color. Off the rack, last minute, a boutique in uh, in it called what you call it in Dallas. I I let the Instagram followers choose, and none of them chose that dress. They all was like, "That's ugly," but it worked. It's <laughs> just that work in person. All right, I want to thank my co-hosts Al Reynolds and Armand Wiggins for joining me tonight. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Fox Hole Face Off. We will see you back here tomorrow, and I think we'll have drinks tomorrow, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>